Hello, my name is Jeff Gadevich, and I'm the Vice President of Product Development for Wilson Electronics. What I'd like to do is talk about the expanding opportunities uh, for passive DAS, specifically in the commercial building space market. Uh, what I'll do is I'll cover what is passive DAS. There are several definitions of, of passive DAS system, so I'll go in a little more detail and, and outline exactly what our definition of passive DAS is. I'll talk about the opportunities and the market demand, um, why passive DAS is, is the right solution, and finally, a little bit about Wilson Electronics and what solutions we have to cover the need for passive DAS in commercial spaces. So first I want to talk about what is a passive DAS system. And so for Wilson Electronics specifically, we address a passive DAS system as a series of antennas, cables, and amplifiers. Um, but at the heart of all of that is a BDA, or bidirectional amplifier. Our passive DAS system starts by setting up an outside antenna, which we call a donor antenna, which collects all available cellular signals that are in the air or in the area for local base stations. All of those are connected to the bidirectional amplifier through a coaxial cable, which is routed inside the building. And then finally, that bidirectional amplifier then routes the amplified signals to indoor server antennas. It could be one to several, depending on the size of the building. The bidirectional amplifier is really the heart of the system, as I said, and what that does is it collects simultaneously all carriers at one time, filters them, amplifies them, conditions them to the standards by the FCC, then recombines those and broadcasts them inside. So for Wilson Electronics specifically, our passive DAS system is a carrier agnostic solution. Uh, so what you can do is cover all carriers simultaneously and then within the building, you can have multiple users on multiple different carriers, all enjoying improved cellular coverage inside of a space. The key parts of a passive DAS system are the outside or donor antenna, and those can either be high gain directional antennas or omnidirectional antennas. You then have cable RF coax that can then route the signal inside the building to the bidirectional amplifier, and then to a one or multiple server antennas. The key here is once you purchase one of our kitted solutions, you do not need carrier authorization or approval to have it installed. You simply work with one of our channel partners or integrators to determine a site survey, frequency plan the coverage needed, design a solution to fit the building that it's intended for, and then have that integrator install that solution inside of the building. So what I want to do now is talk a little bit more about the opportunity that exists for passive gas in commercial buildings. Pew Research and, and others state that 70% of all cellular connections take place inside of a building. Add to the fact that 72% of all those users do experience some difficulty in dropped calls or poor cellular reception inside of a building. So in North America, for example, there are 5.6 million commercial buildings. Passive DAS is a good solution for 98% of those, and I'll talk a little bit more about how Passive DAS and other types of in-building wireless coverage solutions are scalable to fit the different sizes of commercial buildings. So first I want to talk a little bit about the makeup of those 5.6 million commercial buildings. A lot of carriers will promote active DAS solutions, and I'll describe that in a little more detail. But really the important key here is how scalable is a DAS system both for cost, ROI, and ease of install. Active DAS is really intended for a large venue where hundreds, even thousands of users need to be connected simultaneously with adequate coverage. But when you look deeper at those 5.6 million buildings in North America, a majority of those are small buildings. You hear a lot of people talk about how small business drives the economy, and that really is highlighted when you look into more detail behind the makeup of square footage versus commercial buildings. So when you look at commercial buildings in the U.S., 98% of all commercial buildings are 100,000 square feet or less. Going even further, 94% of those are 50,000 square feet and less, and 88% of those buildings are 25,000 square feet and less. Now that's a lot of numbers to throw out, but really what it highlights is there's, there are a number of different commercial spaces for a number of different verticals. For example, um, pharmacies and small footprint stores are typically 25,000 square feet or less. Smaller hotels, boutique hotels are typically less than 50,000 square feet. And so when you're challenged with adequate cellular coverage inside of a building and you approach a professional installer for a coverage solution, they're typically going to promote active DAS. But 
quite frankly, when you look at the cost per square footage when you install an active DAS, it really doesn't scale down below 100,000 square feet. There are a lot of metrics that talk about dollar per square foot on install, and you'll hear small cells and active DAS, which are great systems. Um, but when, when you really look at what those are intended for, 500,000 square feet and above, they do scale very economically. And you can have installed prices in the five to ten dollars per square feet, even lower depending on how big the building is. But when you look at the fixed costs involved with an active DAS system, the connectivity to the building, the head-end equipment that has to connect into the network for the carrier, as well as the equipment itself, it has a difficult time scaling at an economical dollar per square foot install below 100,000 square feet. So what Passive DAS does is it allows you to easily install and target small businesses within the U.S. Aside from the breakdown in the size of square footage with buildings in the U.S., you really look at the number of employees per each of those buildings as well. So in the U.S., 94% of all companies have 50 or fewer employees. Take another step further, 85% of all of those companies have fewer than 25 employees. So not only are a majority of commercial buildings in North America in smaller footprints, they also have fewer than 50 or even 25 employees. And so Passive DAS works really well at addressing an economical coverage solution for those smaller businesses. Add to the fact that as you get a smaller company, they typically don't have a corporate network plan with an operator. You'll hear a lot with companies moving more towards a BYOD or bring your own device environment where employees simply keep their own personal or family plan and get reimbursed from their employer. So this adds to the challenge that in-building signals aren't just uh, more attenuated from different carriers but you have to serve multiple carriers simultaneously and that is really the benefit of a passive DAS system is that it does enhance the cellular coverage for all carriers simultaneously. As I mentioned, there are lots of smaller buildings in the U.S. that require adequate coverage at an affordable price, as well as serving fewer employees, which just doesn't scale economically with the number of employees within a company. But really what exists is who pays for this system. So in a larger building, if you have a, a coverage challenged issue, you can go to a carrier, and a carrier will, if your company is large enough, provide a, an active DAS or an in-building wire, wireless solution. But for those smaller landlords, tenants, and building owners, they really need to find an economical way to do that. They really look at cellular coverage as the fourth utility. It's just as important as water or electricity. Add to the fact that building owners can eliminate a lot of infrastructure cost by going to an all cellular um, employee base. You know, just as many consumers in their homes have cut their cords and rely just on their cell phones, if a small business owner can adequately rely on a cellular connection for their employees' handsets, they can eliminate costly IP phones and fixed landline equipment into their building, thus even further lowering their, their overhead costs. So next we really want to talk about what solutions are out there to really provide in-building coverage for commercial buildings. There is the Active DAS solution, which I mentioned is, is really the more of the gold standard. Um, it is provided by carriers. It is a single carrier solution, so you really only have coverage from one carrier at a time, and you have to, to get multiple carriers to, to fund the equipment as well as build it out. A passive DAS solution is a more economical solution. It does provide coverage for all carriers simultaneously at a much lower cost to install. It does not require backhaul or expensive fixed connectivity like fiber or T1 to the building and does provide adequate coverage to spaces within the building. Lastly, you'll have femtocells cells or other Ethernet solutions, which are good for small businesses provided by the carrier. And these are typically like the femtocells cells that you would see in your home, where you would connect them to a, an Ethernet port to the public network, and then it would broadcast that carrier signals with them inside the building. They're a great solution for smaller spaces within a large building, but they do have some limitations as it relates to number of active users simultaneously and ease of deployment. Small cells are, are another up and coming solution for commercial spaces and again they are more of the gold standard for in building coverage for large spaces like an active DAS solution. You can target radios within a building more adequately with a small cell solution. However, they still do require a fixed connectivity back to the network or the telco through the, through the public network. So why Passive DAS? As I outlined, Passive DAS is, uh, does work simultaneously with all carriers. It boosts voice and data speeds, 
for 4G LTE as well as 2G and existing 3G networks. Uh, it works with all cellular devices simultaneously uh, as well as uh, being a cost effective and building solution. Another benefit of Wilson Electronics passive DAS solutions are the fact that they are FCC approved. Our products are certified under FCC Part 20, which means they all are pre-approved by carriers. This started back in March of 2014. A big important part of that is the network protection features that are designed into our bidirectional amplifiers. They mitigate oscillation, they can detect and mitigate oscillations. Automatic gain control will reduce um, the amplification depending on the outside signal strength. And they also have a squelch or auto shutdown feature which will detect inactivity within a building and then put the amplifier into a shutdown state until it detects an active user within the area. So some examples of how Wilson Electronics can provide adequate coverage with a passive DAS system. The commercial buildings as I outlined have a variety of different sizes, but they also have a, a number of different verticals. Hospitals provide a unique challenge in that in-building coverage varies throughout the facility. Radiology, imaging portions of the building that have heavy construction, thick concrete walls, lead line walls for imaging and MRI departments really block and attenuate signals greatly. So those parts of the building typically suffer from in-building coverage. So the solution that we provided for CHI St. Luke's adequately covered all areas of the hospital, provided better care, better connectivity for doctors, nurses, and administration. And the key here is the passive DAS system was able to be deployed within just a few months at one-fifth the cost they originally had budgeted for an active DAS system. So it solved their problem in less time for less money. So retail provides an opportunity for improved in-building coverage for not just the retailer but for shoppers and their experience. In 2016, 80% of all shoppers use mobile connectivity on their device for price comparisons, looking for other store locations, or even product reviews in order to make a selection. So in-building coverage is very important for retailers, not just for connectivity, but also for the user experience from their customers. So pharmacies are another example within the retail space of where a passive DAS system is, is a good solution. A couple of reasons. First, pharmacies typically are a smaller footprint. 50,000 square feet or less, where a passive DAS solution is very economical when it scales down to price per square foot. But more importantly, a pharmacy requires cellular connectivity first for their shoppers so that you can target them with ads as, as well as connectivity back to the online experience as I mentioned. But also the Internet of Things is very important in a, in a vertical like a pharmacy. A lot of refrigeration and critical storage temperature monitoring requires cellular connectivity back to a, a central computer for monitoring and data logging. Schools are another example where a passive DAS system can improve in building cellular coverage, specifically for emergency connectivity uh, in areas around the administration portion or where security is located on college campuses. Parking garages typically are prone to poor cellular coverage as well as other older buildings, larger buildings, basements of libraries where cellular connectivity is important, not just for convenience, but also for safety. So a little bit about Wilson Electronics. We are an American manufacturer based in Utah. We have a 45 year history in developing RF and wireless products. We operate under three brands. You might know our consumer products as WeBoost and ZBoost and our Wilson Pro series targeted for enterprise and commercial spaces. We're one of the early developers of broadband bidirectional amplifiers. We have a large IP portfolio, specifically 30 plus patents that center around network protection for FCC compliance. So our product offerings under Wilson Pro consist of the Wilson Pro 1000, the Wilson Pro 4000, and the new Wilson Pro 1050. These offer the highest performance for broadband bidirectional boosters available under FCC on the market. Our Wilson Pro 1000 is our most powerful single output booster. It operates with plus 15 dBm of downlink output power. It has extended dynamic range technology, which allows for the booster to compensate for a wide variation of outside signals from very strong to very weak. It can cover up to 50,000 square feet and is available in a traditional wall mount configuration or a 19 inch IT rack configuration. The Wilson Pro 4000 is a four output booster, each port capable of covering up to 20,000 square feet for a total of 80,000 square feet of coverage from a single bidirectional amplifier. It also was available in a standard wall mount configuration or 19 inch rack and it also contains XDR technology which allows for a wide variation of outside signals. And our newest product, the Wilson Pro 1050. 
The Wilson Pro 1050, it contains a main app as well as an inline app. The system can compensate for long cable runs greater than 300 feet while still maintaining adequate coverage out of one or several server antennas. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Wilson Pro, please check out our website as well as other informative videos. Thank you.